Hello, everyone. My name is Bob Claybrook. I'm with MicroStrategies. I'm the practice leader here for the hybrid team. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, our Data Vault solution. With me, I have Ed Serafin, our chief of security, who is also an offensive security practitioner. What we want to talk about today is a solution we call Data Vault. And ultimately, the Data Vault is something that um, we look at your corporate data, corporate enterprise data, and we're trying to protect it. The environment, whether it's on-prem or cloud, is not really relevant. We can execute or set the solution up in, in either place or either premise. From an isolation perspective, we isolate your data, taking it off network. Then we scan the data, looking for all active or current viruses or malware, whatever the case may be, and then we vault it. So again, we're taking it offline in isolation, and it allows you to recover from it at any point if you have a, a malware infestation, or in, in today's world, really ransomware, really what we're talking about. We're trying to protect from ransomware, and the uniqueness to it is we're proactively scanning the backup of the data pretty much. And it, it is something that layers on top of what you have in your environment today. So Ed, the, the first question, just stepping back for a second and trying to describe to folks what, what we're really talking about. Give us, a, give us some insight into what's going on in cybersecurity today with all the remote work and you know, COVID and all this uh, isolation that we have and the access to our enterprise networks today? Well, the current uh, threat landscape that we're occupying with COVID-19 is presenting new and, for the most part, unusual challenges uh, in regards to enterprise solutions and security. Um, today, because of our remote workforce, we have enterprise assets being hooked into insecure environments. So. You know, traditionally, you would spend a lot of money, effort, and resources uh, fortifying your own enterprise environment. And what's taken place is essentially we are circumventing those uh, security controls and mitigations because of the, the work at home situation presented because of the pandemic. So that opens the door, the floodgates, essentially, to allow a whole host of cybersecurity issues to manifest. Uh, ransomware attacks are on the rise. Uh, you have uh, the unwitting inside threat vector where someone's not participating as the insider threat, but because their laptop is on an insecure network and exposed to everything on said network, you know, you have those corporate resources being seized and, and used to, to propagate uh, additional types of malware or, or accessing uh, uh, data, intellectual properties, you know, so there's there's a whole host of problems that we've been presented with as a result of today's threat landscape. So so at the end of the day, what you're saying is, is because we've attached all these home networks, to our enterprise networks, we've increased the number of devices that are susceptible. Right. And in most cases, people in their homes don't follow uh, enterprise standards from a security cybersecurity perspective. So it's just really increasing the vectors that they have to go after or the cybersecurity landscape and, and what we really have to protect. So I know I know what we're talking about today with the data vault is uh, an additional layer of protection. It, it's not something that takes away from your endpoint management, um, your you know, your back end server scanning that you're proactively scanning the servers in your enterprise and firewalls and all things like that. It's really an additional layer. Can you can you talk a little bit about um, what what additional layer there are? Talk through some of the layers that are in a typical corporate enterprise, and then really what we put together to add the additional layer of protection with the data vault. Sure. So what we should be doing as, as practitioners in security is building defense in-depth environments. Okay. What defense in-depth means essentially is that you're building a whole multitude of layers, starting at your perimeter, moving inwards. Uh, it wasn't too long ago. I, I'd say about maybe 10, 15, maybe even 20 years ago, all of security was actually concentrated at the perimeter of an environment. And everyone inside that environment, it was assumed that they belong there and, and should have access to those corporate resources. Now, today, that has dramatically changed into this defense in depth solution or, or, or uh, uh, methodology. Um, what we do is start at the perimeter and start with our firewalls, for example, and then build in a, a set of policies, procedures, and governances to protect the environment and multiple layers moving in. So including things like least, uh, least privilege, uh, including internal uh, endpoint detection and response systems, including internal audits and checks. Uh, you know, 
What we always focus on from a security perspective is something called uh, people, processes, and technology. Okay, the vision of Venn diagram, if you will. You have these three domains. When you throw the ball into any one domain, you have an imbalance, and that imbalance presents itself as significant risk to your environment. So the objective is always to keep the ball in the middle as much as possible by having the appropriate people, people trained to defend your environment, look for gaps, so on and so forth. Then you have your processes. That would be your, your compliance. That would be uh, any type of procedures and policies in place, uh, such as change management processes, uh, new uh, user creation, all, all the paper trail stuff to enforce and, and create authority to your security team to actually protect your environment. And then you have the technology. Uh, a lot of companies just seem to throw the ball to the technology because, you know, people are good salespeople out there. I mean, you have these new AI technologies that, that defend you against intrusion, uh, uh, intrusions into your environment. So you have these smart intrusion protection and detection systems. You have antivirus systems. You have all of this technology that's built to protect the environment. But what we find most of the time is that they are improperly used or right. they, they are, are overly um, giving you a false sense of security. So, so right there, the only the point I would make is a simple example, right? I have virus scanning running in my enterprise on my backend servers, but potentially right. something goes wrong. Those definitions aren't being updated, right? So that's just an area that falls through the cracks because we, as, as in management, we make assumptions that these things are occurring on a regular basis. And then you have a, a server that could fall victim to ransomware or any other malicious uh, type activity. Well, and I think that's, that, so. That's it, right? I mean, look, you, what you demonstrated there in your example is is having overconfidence in one solution. Because right. you did that and that didn't take place, that patching or definition update, you're now open to risk. Whereas if you had multiple layers of defense, you have a series of fail safes or safety nets, if you will, to protect you, to compensate for that lack of, of updating. And so we've been able to take, you know, with the data vault, we've been able to add an additional layer that really hasn't been in the market prior. And it, it's a managed service that we're really taking, you know, the data that you have at uh, your, your, your holiest of holy, as we like to say, where we're, again, we're isolating it, we're scanning it, and we're vaulting it in an offsite location or off network, as you want to say. And then if there's a problem in the environment and a server gets impacted, it's in, as everyone knows with ransomware, it gets into the backups and you're not able to recover it. We would have a copy that would be independent of all the layers of security that you already have in place, right? And we could bring it back from that from that area, that vault area. So we could go back and bring it back. And th I guess the nice thing is we, we can bring back an entire the entire data set. We can bring back a server, whatever whatever area, whatever object we need to bring back. And we can also proactively scan it before we bring it back to the environment. So it, it, again, it's this this is not replacing the layers that you have today. It's an additional layer. And it just goes above and beyond all of the, the multitude of uh, layers of security that are out there. So I think well, might, I'm the, just going to most, that thing. The, the, the most appropriate uh, description would be we, we're militarizing this def, uh, defense in depth strategy, right? So we are, are building a series of fortifications that we're bringing to the party. So instead of bringing yet another tool or, or solution into an environment, what we're doing is bringing an entire separate environment that we manage to your environment to create a, a, a segmented safe vault isolation area that is fortified. Correct. An isolated exactly. environment. Exactly. All right. Well, any final thoughts today? Uh, no. You have any other questions for me? I think we've covered it. We talked about we went through the data vault. You know, it's again the day our data vault solution. We isolate, we proactively scan, and then we vault. So you could talk about it being a, a typical recovery or data backup, but at the end of the day, we're proactively scanning those resources to ensure that there is nothing there. Um, it's modular. You could take it back uh, by piece or by server, or you could bring back the entire environment. Everything's being broken up. So um, then we talked about the fact it's an additional layer of security above and beyond what you're doing today. So I think I think we've given a well-rounded uh, explanation of, and, and really we talked about the cybersecurity landscape today with the in-home networks being attached and the attack vector being so much larger than it once was because you have 90 plus percent of your people coming into your corporate enterprise remotely. And that just brings all those home devices in and just really sets us up for a, a difficult time if we're not executing our cybersecurity best practices 
at the, at the, at the top notch level. I, I will end with a, a thought that I, I convey very often when I talk to clients and, and even when I give lectures about security. The important message here is that hope is not a strategy and hope will not protect you. We all hope right. that these things won't happen to us and we all have been lulled into a sense of false sense of security that these things can happen to us. But the fact of the matter is they do and they do often. And when they occur, they are absolutely devastating. So it's so important, especially now more than ever, to take a proactive stance to secure everything you've worked to build as a company. And have, have, have one leg to stand on at the end of the day. So, you know, you, to be able to get things back. So, all right, Ed, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. And uh, look forward to working with you in the future. Very good. Take care, Bob. Take care.